people have been asking me about the relationship between mind and body and I'm currently about to run a marathon and I've been training. People think it's kind of unusual for um, a Tibetan Lama to be exercising, let alone running a marathon, and what the relationship between uh, body and mind is and running and meditation. So for myself, it's not that uh, surprising. I mean, I think there is a tradition of mind, body and mind, and I think in the West, sometimes the body and mind have been split up. So when people think about meditation or spirituality, they think it's very much distancing themselves from a, a body per se. But the way I've been trained and brought up and the way I understand this topic and, and kind of whole experience is that they are actually meant to be united. When we meditate, for example, even sitting meditation, it's a whole body experience, a whole mind experience. So people said, you know, are you, can you meditate while you're running? And I said, of course, I mean, I hope so. I've been trying, <laughs> it seems to be working okay. So, you know, it's it's a matter of just taking the principles because basically you should be able to practice meditate anywhere because the way I like to think about it is that you're using your mind uh, and once you're using your mind, you have ability to meditate. So when you're running, obviously there's more focus on the movement in running. And when you're running, there's, there's a sense of a purpose and focus, which is like the meditation. You, traditionally, you might use the breathing. You might use a visualization. And in running... You have the orientation you're going, and you also have your feet, you have your arms, and there's a whole uh, body experience. So like, for example, when I'm running, I always try to keep my uh, center kind of in my heart, and then try to have my, I realize my um, movement of my being is coming, even though the legs are down there, that my center is coming from here, movement's coming from here. And then I try to keep a... Um, my visual field like roughly 10 feet out so that I'm looking down slightly and keeping my eye on the um, path and that's like a breathing meditation when you're sitting you, you, you're focused here and then the only difference is you're moving and you're breathing a lot quicker you know but I think you know it's the same thing you're dealing with pain dealing with um, thoughts you're doing all these elements and that's how you regard it so some some people prefer maybe to use running as a way to kind of think about things and escape. I know I, I prefer myself. I think you can do that. And sometimes when you first start running, you have a lot of thoughts. Just like in meditation, when you first sit down, you have a lot of thoughts. And then once you begin to move, you begin to balance your mind and body. So I think it's the same with any kind of sport or activity. If you're riding a horse, it's, it's a balance. If you're skiing or if you're playing golf, whatever it may be, there's the kind of mind-body coordination. And that's inherent because the notion of meditation is, is that you're synchronizing your mind with your body, you're using the present moment as your gauge, as a way of being present and being here, being um, in the moment and being in the now, as they say, right, present. And the other day when I was uh, practicing my interval training, I realized that, that it was very important to be completely present. And as soon as you let your mind go too far into the future, like how long do I have and things like this, automatically you sometimes get to get tired. It's, it's And the present moment can be this very full moment. In fact, the present moment, as, you, as, as you're running, if you can be there, because it's the totality of what you're doing, it, time goes by very quickly. So I don't, I don't feel like I'm running a long time. You get tired. And I think you come in, in and out of it, and people might talk about it being in the zone. So I think there's that element. But I think it's the same, you know, mind and body. And I feel like just for general health these days, you need to do something. And I, and I know that even apparently the um, sort of new surveys say that people should try to get like 30 minutes of exercise or some sort of aerobic thing every day. And I think we live in a very kind of stagnant culture where we're going from the car to the computer is just a lot of sedentariness and one of the things that meditation has really shown me is, is that breathing is really important you know we're, we're meant to breathe as human beings running obviously exemplifies that to one extreme but whatever it is we can breathe and move and the more we breathe the more we feel alive the more the mind feels inspired the more it can engage so it doesn't surprise me that people go to work 
go to the gym, go do something because it's it's they're missing that element. And I think that's something that's been there for you know centuries. Uh, you can read old meditation texts about it, uh, about the you know, un unity of mind and body. It's called Xinjong, and Xinjong means um, processing or training or developing. And you have Xinjong of mind, which is basically meditation, training and processing the mind. The more you train and process the mind, the more it becomes settled. Uh, the more useful, in fact, they say, the more processed the mind becomes, the stronger it becomes, the more flexible it becomes. Same with the body. I think if you if you train the body, it becomes stronger, more flexible. And I think this is true even as you get older. You know, I've talked to people. You know, I was talking to somebody the other day who's turning sixty, and they're saying that because they were thought that as you get older, you're getting older, so they should do less. So they start doing less, and they found they got worse, and now they're starting to do a little more, and they're feeling better. And it's just, you know, I think it's what people think should happen and what's really happening. So I think the meditation tradition is known about this and saying even as long as you can, you keep that movement. So, I, you know, I definitely encourage people to have something. It doesn't have to be as extreme as what I'm doing, even though I'm teaching the middle way. <laughs> Good luck.